It's wonderful to see you, Pastor Sergey. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us. And we have, of course, Pastor Natalie, their wonderful son Elijah. And Pastor Henry Madava. Welcome. Thank you, Pastor Rod Parsley. Thank you very much. <laughs> what an incredible joy to have you. Thank you. It's my joy. I noticed that map behind you. What, what is that? That's the Ukrainian map. There it is. And what are the red, the red pins? That's where our churches are situated. My great goodness. You were, of course, born in Zimbabwe. Exactly. I was born when it was not even Zimbabwe. It was Rhodesia then. <laughs> yes, my goodness. Well, I, I have had the distinct joy and honor to traveling to Zimbabwe. It is one beautiful, beautiful place. But now then, how long have you been in Ukraine? I've been in Ukraine since 1986. That's a long time. Yes, and you're the pastor of Victory Christian Church. Exactly, Pastor Rod Pasley. <laughs> and and in there in Kiev. I am in Kiev. That's where our main church is situated, exactly in Kiev. And then from that marvelous church, 200 churches across Ukraine. Exactly. And these are churches, the pastors, I raised them up in Kiev and send them out to start new congregations. In other words, we do not take over somebody else's church. These are the congregations we started. Wonderful. That's the true Book of Acts church growth pattern. Thank you. Have <laughs> That's that, the only way we do it. <laughs> have that beautiful mother church, and from there, all the new churches all across the nation, and also... I'm told that you also have 15 churches across Europe, including Poland, Germany, Russia, and Slovakia. Exactly. Uh, right now, we have many people who used to go to Europe from Ukraine. Eventually, we started churches there through them. And in Russia as well, our churches in Russia right now are in a very difficult position. The FSB yes. comes almost every day, but we have churches all over. We even have churches in India, in Tajikistan, and in Kyrgyzstan. Yes. We are so thankful for your work in the gospel of Christ. It's an amazing thing when God raises up an apostle like you with a heart yes. to bring people into God's kingdom to raise up mighty churches far beyond yourself and your home church. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for everything that you're doing. It's an amazing work. And uh, we are delighted to have met you through our Russian Harvest pastors here in Columbus, Ohio, and City Harvest Network pastors. And uh, joining us today, of course, many, many thousands of pastors across America and around the world. And we have this connection with beautiful, powerful men of God like you, who are under such vicious attack right now. Uh, we know that Russia has not uh, given up its goal to surround and capture the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Uh, what are you seeing right there in the capital city, Pastor? Uh, the last week, there's been a big change in the way they are fighting around Kiev. Okay. Mainly because they've been firing more rockets, less of the bombs from aircrafts, I guess because the anti-aircrafts have been working pretty effectively. So they've been sending more rockets. And so almost every day, I'm still in my office. And while I'm sitting here, I hear so many loud bangs all around me. Some of them are because the anti-aircraft guns shooting out. And some of them are from what the Russians are shooting in. 
they've been moved away from Kiev, maybe about 25 to 30 miles. So they're not very close, but where I am here, they are about 10 miles from where I am, the Russian soldiers. But coming into Kiev is going to prove very difficult for them. So I think they've not given that hope, but they're not very enthusiastic about it anymore. Well, and that's for one reason. Mighty men of God like you, your churches, so many Christians praying, and the bravery, the bravery of the Ukrainian people is something that has taken the attention of the entire world. We realize that uh, this battle is not just armies, I mean, fighting one another. There's yes. a spiritual af aspect to it as well. Yes. Because I think as far as I'm, I know, the Russian government does think that churches like ours have been much to blame, according to them, for the reason why Ukraine is becoming so democratic, so pro-Western European, so very free. Well, we are not 100% European in the sense that there's so much uh, liberty, but not always gospel liberty in Europe. Right. So, yeah, we are standing for the gospel. Yes, there's been a big influence of churches in Ukraine, and that has affected the nation very much. Yes, I want everyone in America and Europe to hear this amazing pastor over 200 churches in Ukraine, pastors, many churches across Europe. I want you to understand that he understands this is a spiritual warfare. It's not just a military conflict. Ukraine is being singled out because it is so mighty for Amen. the witness of the gospel of Christ Jesus. They are standing up. They are the spearhead of revival not only in Ukraine, but across Europe and affecting the world. So I want to thank each one of you for standing with us at World Harvest Church, standing with us Amen. at Breakthrough, standing with Amen. us, Amen. City Harvest Network pastors, so that we can get as much relief and supplies and financial support yeah. to men like this in Ukraine. Do you understand that Pastor Madava is sitting right now and listening to bombs going off and anti-aircraft artillery going off all around him. The city is standing and we Amen. must keep it standing. We must support. We must not only Amen. call our government to reckon, we must tell our senators, our congressmen, we must petition the White House get more help to Ukraine and Amen. get it there immediately. Amen. These are real people. Their families yes. are in Ukraine. Over 100 of their family members are there. And we're praying, but we must do more than pray. We must give, we must support, Amen. and let us do that as if we were in greater than a military conflict we are in a spiritual conflict for the souls of men, and yeah. we will win. We will win. The more they persecuted them, the more they prospered and grew. Yeah. So, Pastor Madava, how's your ministry helping folks in Ukraine? What will our support for you help you to accomplish? When the war started, uh, many Ukrainians began to leave the country. Yes. So there was this catastrophe at the border, especially Ukraine-Polish border. Yes. They estimate that maybe five to six million Ukrainians have crossed the borders. Wow. But Amazing. that's what everybody was seeing. Yes. The other 30 million are still inside the country. Wow. In other words, the bigger catastrophe is not at the border. Yes. It's just yes. that at the border, there was a concentration of people. Yes. It's 30 million lives still in Ukraine. Wow. So what we are doing is we are helping at the border, 
but we are holding our resources to use more within the country because everybody from all over the world are coming to the borders to help. Yeah. But inside the country, like in places like Mariupol, Kharkiv, Sumy, Melitopol, Kiev, not everybody's coming, Chernigov. Our church building, one of our church buildings in Chernigov was hit by a missile. And wow. instead of a church building, there's a big crater there now because the missile hit. So those are the kind of people now we are helping. We started something, something we call There is Hope. There is so Hope. In, there is Hope. In our movement, the project we started, There is Hope, we are helping people with food, medicines, clothes, and even helping them to do their little errands if they cannot do them. Yes. There are many people who cannot leave their houses or out of their bomb shelters. Mm -hmm. So we have to do some errands for them. And also moving some of the help into other cities together with the government convoys because it's very dangerous to do that. So that's what we do. We buy a lot of stuff, we sort it out, then we go out and we give it out. But as a church, we don't just give things out. <laughs> we bring it with the gospel. God, <laughs> we I preach know. to people, we pray for people and we help them. So it's not just giving out food and leave. I mean, we are not, uh, sorry for that word, I'm, we're not the Salvation Army. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So we actually preach the gospel and bring the food together with it. Oh, nice. So that's what we, we always do that, but especially now. It's so interesting to hear you share about so much attention being at the borders when there are many, many more millions of people yeah. still in Ukraine yes. and they're being cut off from electricity, mm. they're being cut off from water, they're being cut off from food, and the Church of Jesus Christ, mm. the great Victory Christian Church in Kiev, Ukraine, and around the world are getting these supplies to those people that need it so desperately. And we're going to help you. And we are proud to help you to stand with you. Since you're inside Ukraine right now, inside Kiev, could you share a story of hope with those that are watching that you've seen firsthand? Yeah, we had uh, one of our leaders, uh, she was in, in her house. It's a high rise apartment. Yes. And in the evenings, I do prayer meetings with them sometimes through Zoom or through other places, other, <laughs> other, other channels. So she left her house to go to the friend so she can join the Zoom prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. And as soon as she left, a rocket came into her house, destroyed everything. Wow. She was going to die if she had not gone for the prayer meeting. How so great is our God. Those kinds of miracles are happening everywhere. We have not had any single person from our church who died. Those who are in the army or not in the army. Everybody pastor, is alive. Did you hear what this pastor, so brave, Pastor Madava of the Victory Christian Church in Kiev, where he is sitting, right now, over 200, 220 churches under his care, and not a person in the Ukrainian military or in their churches has lost their lives. I want you to rejoice with me, but I want you to do more than that. I want you to help me help Pastor Madava and these over 200 churches who are there taking food, water, medical supplies, relief yes, supplies, yes. praying with the Amen, people, yes. covering them in prayer, Amen. teaching them God's word. We must rise up a mighty army for Jesus Christ. Amen. We must reach around the world and help those that are in such desperate need right now. Yes. Thank you for what you've done, but I thank you for what you're about to do. Even more, we'd love to double our efforts in Ukraine, and we'd love to do it right now. We can do that with your help. Pastor Natalie, 
This is the longest I've seen you not speak. Yeah. Because I know your heart is so huge. And I'm very glad to hear this testimony yeah. and this conversation. Pastor Henry Madava, I'm so delighted in Спасибо, to see you. Спасибо, Thank you for joining this call. Вы настоящий герой. You are a true hero. Который стоите на передовой. That you're standing in in the, in the front. Но знаете, что ваши братья и сёстры здесь есть в Америке, и наш прекрасный благословенный пастор доктор Род Парсли, мы всей церковью молимся за вас. И делаем все возможное, чтобы вам было легче. I know that you have brothers and sisters in Christ that are here with yeah. Pastor Rod Parsley and the whole church praying and supporting yes. you yes. every step of the way. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I don't look at myself as a hero because, you know, when God calls you and anoints you, he puts in you everything you need to meet anything that's on the way. So when this war came along, it wasn't a supernatural decision to stay here. It was part of the calling. It's part of the anointing. It's part of the, the hand of God on you. So it's, it's just like walking in your calling and just do what you're supposed to do. So I realized that God puts so much in us and we are responsible to make sure we stand our ground, stand with God, and he will be able to work through us. And that's what I'm doing. We are so thankful to meet you, Pastor Madava, and I look forward to the day, and I pray it's not far in our future, yes. when I can get you on an aircraft and get you to the United States so I can hug your neck. I am so <laughs> thankful for you, for your great ministry. Amen. Lord, we pray for Pastor Madava right now. Yes. We pray that no bomb yes. will come near them. No weapon Amen. formed yes. against them will prosper. And every Thank tongue you. that rises against them in judgment, we condemn in, in the Jesus. name of Jesus Christ. We Thank pray you. a safety shield over this great man of God, over every church member, over every person in the Ukrainian military. We pray, God, open the eyes of our leaders and our churches to help support this great spearhead of revival. May it be as in the book of Acts from Kiev. May the entire European nations become on fire for God and may many, many millions and millions of souls be brought to the saving grace of Jesus Christ and a revival spread yes. from there to the four corners of the earth. Yes. Oh God, encourage Pastor Madava and all those who labor with him in your kingdom. And we pray for a swift end to this war. May the evil hand of war be stopped. May Russia go back across its own borders. Yes. Not touch the people of God. Thank you for the character, the strength, the fearlessness of the Ukrainian church. Thank you for their prayers. Thank you that they are supporting all of the people standing against this advancement of evil. In Jesus' name, we plead his blood and believe you for great victory. Amen. 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 Pastor Madava, I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you very much, Pastor Rod Fassel. It was a pleasure. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.